In today's video brought to you by Maven Asset Management, let's review Maximo Condition Monitoring. Condition Monitoring provides powerful preventative maintenance features that enable you to identify potential problems on your assets before asset failures can occur. So to do this, let's jump in and show some examples highlighting the condition monitoring functionality. And I'm going to start here with a chart. In this example, we're going to assume that we have a centrifugal pump and there's a number of meters set up on this pump. One of those meters is measuring the O pressure or the outlet pressure. And we can see that on this chart. Our O pressure readings are shown here on our Y axis and the X axis showing the values over time. Each one of these black squares represents a meter reading. But you'll notice there's also some yellow and red lines, both on the top and on the bottom. These are what we call our lower control limits, and these are our upper control limits. And for each one of those, we have a yellow line, which is a warning line, and a red line means we need to take action. So according to the specifications for this particular centrifugal pump, this is the area of meter readings that we want to be in. We want to be between 3,500 and 5,000 PSI. If we go above or below those values, we can potentially be having a problem with our asset. And then if we exceed those, the action limit, so if we exceed 5,500 or go below 3,200, we want to take action on the asset, inspect it, see what's going on, so an asset failure doesn't occur. So now when we look at these particular readings, we can see we're in a pretty good steady state here in the middle, but then something happened over time and we're starting to creep up into the top. And then our last meter reading here hit 5,500, which is our upper action limit. So we want to take action. Well, using Maximo, we want to monitor or we want to automate that. And we can do that with a condition monitoring application. We basically set up a point on this particular meter for the asset, which is known here. We identify our upper and lower control limits as shown here. And then if we enable the maximum cron task to automate work orders based on those values, when we hit this value, Maximo will automatically generate the specified work order or job plan on the work order for our action. We can do the same thing if we look at a characteristic meter. Our characteristic meter is very different than a pressure or a temperature meter reading where we're looking at a specific value. Characteristic meetings, in this case, we're looking at oil color. So maybe we have a truck or maybe we have a vehicle in our fleet that we're monitoring. In this case, these are the values that I can have for my oil color reading from that meter, and this is set up in a Maximo domain, and I can see my same readings over time. But what I can do with my characteristic meetings or what I want to take action on is if it starts to hit these darker values, maybe a dark brown or a red, again, I want to take an action. So with our characteristic meeting, we see our values over time, now we start to see him creeping up into some bad colors. He hits dark brown. We want Maximo to automatically generate a PM work order. So how do we do that? Again, in condition monitoring, we go in, set up a point on the particular asset, on the particular characteristic meter. In this case, it's an oil meter. And we identify what those colors are. The colors are dark brown or red. So if either of these colors are noted from a meter reading, we want Maximo to automatically kick out that PM work order, which is noted down here, along with the associated work priority. Now to enable condition monitoring, there's just a few quick things that you have to do. First off, there's a Maximo cron task. It's the measure point Wojen cron task. It is not enabled by default, so you have to activate it and you have to add that cron task instance. I want to highlight that I do have a minute here as shown in our demonstration today that we'll use. This is not a realistic value for a production environment. I'm just using that for our demo that we'll have in just a few minutes. But again, make sure this cron task is enabled and also review your organization settings for your PM options and make sure these two that I'll highlight down here, but I won't 
repeat those. It's quite a few words. Um, make sure your, your, your condition monitoring woe generation processes are also enabled. So now let's head over to Maximo and let's show a demonstration of condition monitoring. Okay, I've signed into Maximo and I've accessed the condition monitoring application. I'm going to go ahead and create a new record for a critical meter that I have on an asset. And I'm going to call this a demo and the asset number I'm going to use is 2200. So I'm letting Maximo auto assign my point number. I do want to select that asset so we can make sure that we associate the right asset number and our meter. So it's a centrifugal pump. Let me select my meter and I'm going to select my O pressure and notice that it's a gauge read or a gauge meter type. Gauge meter type is really important for me as we showed in the presentation because we want to make sure that we set the upper and lower limits. So my upper warning limit is the first value. I'm going to set that as 5,000. And if you remember from looking at the chart, think of that as the yellow line. I want to take a warning. However, I, if my meter reading exceeds 5,500, this is where I want to take an action. I need to do something. So in my case, I'm going to select a PM that's associated with that asset. So I'm going to generate a PM work order, and I have a default priority here of three. So that's perfect. So again, these are the upper limits. For my lower limits on my pressure reading, I'm now going to set this at 3,000. Again, that's the yellow line. If it goes below that, let's say 2,500, this again is where I need to take an action. I'm going to select that same PM value or that is associated with my asset 2,200 and Maximo built that relationship for me. And again, it's going to create it with a lower limit priority for my work order of three. So when we look at this again, think of these first two values, the upper warning, lower warning is the yellow, upper action, lower action is the red. So essentially the part that I want to be in, my good reading values are between three and 5,000. That's where I want to be. That's a sweet spot for the meter reading of this asset. If I scroll down, continuing with our condition monitoring for this meter, I also had the option to define my characteristic action values. These are for characteristic meters like our oil readings for a vehicle or a truck. We also showed that in the presentation. I'm not going to do that at this point because I have a gauge um, for my meter reading. But now what Condition Monitor also enables me to do is I want to test this as I want to make sure that I can have this point kick off and kick off an incorrect value or an incorrect value or a high warning value. So the beauty about Max Demo Data is I can put in anything I want here again to test this. I'm going to put in a high value at 5,800. So that's my pressure reading. So again, with a value of 5,800 that I see here, it should automatically kick off a cron task or kick off that cron task and have my work order generated. Now my cron task is going to take a few minutes to run. I'm not going to see it right here. And so we're, while we're waiting for that, let's come back. I'm going to mess up my navigation here a little bit. I apologize for that. But let's bring up our asset to make sure it's there. If I come in asset 2200, let's make sure he took our meter reading. I look at my meter reading history for my gauge. I'm approximately this time right here, which is 5800, so I can see the value there. Also, what I can do is, um, let me grab, navigate here a little better, I apologize. Let's bring up that value, demo 2200. Did he put our work order in? No, our work order is still not generated. So let's take a look at our cron task. I've bookmarked the particular cron task, measure point cron task, and let's take a look at it. I've got it set for my demo of every one minute. If I click on my history, I can see the last time that it ran. So it's running every minute. So it's going to pick this value up in just a, a few seconds as I go back. So let's try one more time. And where do I want to go? I want to go back to condition monitoring. I'm going to bring up my demonstration here, scroll down, and there it is. So again, this is the value that I had input, 5,800. And now when the cron task ran and it was able to pick up that value, there's sometimes a time lapse there, and it picked up that this value exceeded the upper control limit, right? It's the upper action limit, 
5,500. I put in 58, so it generated a work order. So I did this all live time. It's really exciting to see how powerful condition monitoring functionality is, but also how easy it is to set up. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your time.